Charlie Hebdo was a, was a particularly serious incident, but it represents a pattern of violence against journalists in quite a number of countries in Europe. Um, there's been research done by the Council of Europe which shows that in about a dozen to 15 countries there is a, a serious trend of violence against journalists. Although it's not often perpetrated by the states, it is often either quietly condoned by the states or attacks are not sufficiently investigated. Um, and so a climate um, um, develops whereby violence becomes the norm and it becomes okay to beat up a journalist if he criticizes, um, say, a local mayor or somebody in, in, in some position in, in government or is otherwise in power. That clearly has a serious effect on the individual journalist, but it, had, it sends a strong message to other journalists that if you're going to speak up, bad things are going to happen to you. And to that extent, Charlie Hebdo really has acted or ought to act as a wake-up call. And it should lead to an awareness that this isn't just an issue in, in France, but it actually is an issue across Europe and we, and we need to act on it. If you look at Russia and Turkey and the experience of journalists in those countries, um, those are two, and, and Azerbaijan for example, those are very strong examples of countries where there are blatant violations of media freedom. Journalists are imprisoned for just doing their work, um, they are attacked, sometimes they are killed. Um, and those are very sort of in-your-face kind of um, violations of media freedom. But I think what is as concerning is a um, trend in, in quite a number of other countries, particularly in southeastern Europe, but not just there. Um, where there is much more insidious, the attack on media freedom is, is much more subtle, but it's very strong nevertheless. And in those countries you see a combination of um, an increasing control of business um, over the media, um, which takes the media away from its watchdog function of um, you know, criticising and, and, and holding um, those empowered to account and it co-opts them onto you know, business narratives. So they, in, in extreme cases, that means that they become mouthpieces for their, um, for their owners. You combine that with a sort of a low level but very um, persistent um, violence where uh, journalists perhaps aren't killed, um, but they will be beaten up, their cameras will be destroyed. Um, and again, those attacks aren't investigated by the police. Um, and that equally leads to a, you know, a, a climate of fear among journalists. So the net effect is the same. The net effect is that journalists will shy away from writing about stories that they ought to be writing about and the public isn't informed. Just to elaborate a little bit, that is really exacerbated in, in a number of countries by the employment conditions that, that journalists work under. So they um, are often underpaid, and I mean severely underpaid. So journalism becomes one of the lower paid um, professions in society. That means that they don't attract talent. Um, their job security is almost zero, so they can be fired um, nearly at will. And there have been examples even where journalists have been forced to sign their resignation letters almost when they were hired. So there's, there's a complete lack of um, security. And all of that means that journalism is no longer, you know, a profession that can um, really exercise that watchdog function in society.